Good morning, Valparaiso Baptist Church. Good morning, good morning. Another wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And it's so wonderful to be among other believers. And in fact, one of the other believers, uh, Kenny Gamblin, just had his birthday uh, the other day. So would you join me in singing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gamma. Happy birthday to you. Amen, amen. Would you bow your heads and pray with me today? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for... We thank you so much that you've given us this space and this time to gather among other believers to worship you. I pray that you would help, help us to lose sight of the troubles of this world for a few moments as we take this time to focus solely on you. And I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you stand and sing with us today?
seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Rick told me that uh, this service, I had no excuse not to get up here and say hello. So <laughs> here I am. But we had a great vacation this past week. Uh, we just enjoyed traveling, enjoyed getting out, and just resting and relaxing. So thank you all for just a week of vacation to be able to enjoy with the family. Uh, Hannah really enjoyed meeting Mickey Mouse. So you'll, you'll have to see that adorable video if you haven't seen it online already. So with that said, uh, just welcome to the church. If you're here for the first time, we want to make sure to make you feel welcome. So please uh, scan one of those uh, QR codes in front of you there and let us know that you came to visit. If uh, you're not tech savvy and you'd rather fill out something in person, you can go out those doors to your left and find our information desk. And there you can fill out some information as well. And so make sure to do that. If you fill out a guest card, uh, we have a special gift that we would love to get in your hands just to thank you for that visit. So I don't really have too many special announcements for you, but we do have some baptism certificates, and I think we have some folk here for that. So let me take a look here. Is Theo here? Theo, come on up, buddy. Congratulations, my friend. All right, then we have Jessica Ray here, and Christopher, her fiance, was not able to be here today, but we're going to hand her both of these certificates for she and Christopher. All right, is Ron here this morning? Ron Zimmerman? Oh, I haven't seen him. I know Michael is here. Michael Zaragoza. Come on up. Uh, this little known guy named Jeff Wingard is here. So <laughs> come on up, man. Yeah. All right, let's see if there's anyone else here. Is Ivy here? Ivy, here you go, girl. I don't believe McKenna's here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Is Jade here? No Jade today. Karen is here, though. Karen Jurdy. What about Sarah Barney? Have I seen her this morning? She's not here today. All right. So we will get these at a later date. So praise the Lord, though. We're excited to hand those out. Let's go to Lord in prayer, and we'll continue on with service this morning. Heavenly Father, it's so good to be in your house. We're so thankful to be able to worship together today. Lord, we ask a blessing upon the music that we sing and a blessing upon your speaker this morning as Rick has come prepared to bless us with the word of God this morning. And so, Father, open up our hearts and our minds to hear what it is that you've laid on his heart to preach. We ask this all in the precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, let's stand together and sing. Take me to the riverside 
of glory and know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I
loved your grace. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your grace. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Interestingly enough, I uh, found out his message was on prayer today, and it just so happened that in Sunday school, we happened to be going through the last prayer that Jesus speaks about in the book of John, and his message was very intriguing. He prayed specifically for unity, and so I just found that very interesting today that Yes, sir. Having, having a message about prayer and then following it up with Sunday school. So. That's right. Well, I'm going to try to be Jeff Wingard this morning. Are you ready? Well, good morning, Valpo Baptist. <laughs> I want you to know I worked on that all week. <laughs> ah. Well, good morning, everybody. It is so good to be home. Let me just say this really quick. Carrie and I would like to give a sincere thank you to those of you who made the wedding last week. You were part of a special day for us, and you made our day, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We all got on a foot. I still don't see Carrie. She hasn't made it back yet. Oh, she moved. No, Carrie Castro. So in case you didn't know, the whole office was gone this week. Uh, and it was a foot race to get back for this morning. Mitch and I made it, but <clears throat> anyhow. <laughs> so let's pray, and we're going to get into the Word. Father, thank you for another chance to just come into the doors of your house, for another chance to just worship you with everything we have. Lord, I pray that you'll take some of the words that are said this morning You'll help each and every one of us apply it to our own lives so that we might be better prayer warriors for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I got to hold this up. I told Mitch, it's not my eyeballs that are messed up, it's these glasses. So, but this morning I want to talk to you about something that should be dear to all of our hearts if you're a follower of Jesus, and that's prayer. You see, prayer is a mighty tool that we have at our fingertips, so to speak. However, some of us neglect to use the opportunity to spend time with our Father. 
James 5.16 reads this. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And I want to read that from another translation this morning. Here's how the NASB 1995 reads. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And the Christian Standard Bible reads in the latter part of verse 16, the prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Friends, there's power in prayer. And there's also guidance and direction. How are we ever to know God's will for our lives if we're not actively communicating with our Father? You see, God loves to hear from you, his children. Now, you might believe that statement this morning, and I would hope that you would if you're a follower of Jesus. But the question that might be raised in your mind could be this. What is the importance of praying? I mean, other than the fact that we know God loves to commu- us to communicate with him, what's the importance of prayer and the way that we pray to him? And hopefully this morning when all is said, we'll be able to use these words as a reminder of the importance of prayer and that we'll have a more solid understanding of prayer. So if you've got your Bibles this morning, I would invite you to open them to John chapter 15. We're going to look at the first eight verses. We're going to look and see just how important our dependence on God really is. I'll give you just a minute to get there. John 15, starting in verse 1. John 15, starting in verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself... Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. In reading for today, I learned some important things about prayer, and I'd like to share them with you. I want to begin this morning by understanding that the idea of prayer is our open line of communication to God. Listen, when you pray, is there meaning behind it? Or is it just some sort of form prayer because that's what you've been doing all of your life? I want you to think of this today. Prayer is a necessity to followers of Jesus. It's not just a command that we're given. No. We can use it as a discipline if we would like. But it isn't that either. It's the fact that prayer is a necessity. For the believer, it's the way that we're able to speak to God. And it's also the way that we learn to listen for his responses. Quiz time. How many times have we prayed and just assumed that the way we were feeling a few hours, the way we were feeling a few hours later must be his answer. 
How many times have you done that? We pray for something, and a few hours later we say, well, this must be it because this is the answer I have in my head. Okay? Or in a pinch of a situation, we pray. And minutes later, we have the solution. Now, the funny thing about that is this. The solution that you have is the same, same solution that you were thinking before you ever prayed. You see, prayer in the Christian's life is just as important as nourishment is to the body. Amen. It's just as important as the air that we breathe into our body. And when we pray in the correct manner, it fills and responds freshes our spirit, and most importantly, it teaches us to lean upon God. Yes. Also, the way that we pray is not as important as the condition of your heart while you're praying. Amen. We just talked about the importance of being dependent on God a minute ago. In this passage here in John 15, it should help us to understand our interdependence on him. He is our lifeline. Why would we who are followers of Jesus not realize that? Let me share a story with you that I read. Three ministers were talking about prayer. They were talking in general and they, uh, of the appropriate and effective positions of prayer. And as they were talking, a telephone repairman was working on the phone system in the background. One minister shared that he felt the key was in the hands. He always held his hands together and he pointed them upward as a form of symbolic worship. The second suggested that real prayer was conducted on your knees. The third suggested that they both had it wrong. The only position worth its salt was to pray while stretched out flat on the floor. Now, by this time, the phone man couldn't stay out of the conversation any longer. He interjected this. I found that the most powerful prayer I ever made was while I was dangling upside down by my heels from a power pole suspended 40 feet in the air. <laughs> the truth of the matter is this. In Matthew 6, we're given instruction concerning prayer. And I want to read that to you and share it with you this morning. Starting in verse 5, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, Go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Amen. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ever ask. Amen. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men in their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. You see, part of the importance in the way we pray 
is the condition of our hearts. And when your heart is right, what does John 15, 7 teach us? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, another way to understand the importance of praying and the way we pray is the fact that it shows growth in each and every one of us. In John 15, 5, we read, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Have you ever considered that when a Christian neglects their time with God in prayer, that they're actually saying this, God, I can do this on my own. I don't need you. It's like taking the wheel of life and driving yourself. You see, it's real easy to put God in the back seat when things are going well. But how many times when a troublesome time comes, Are we quick to let go of that wheel and say, God, this one's all yours? We can't grow when we have no communication with our Father. And this is where I want to stay for a few minutes. Growth. How many times do we think all is good without prayer when in all reality it's a train wreck? I want to share with you a time when I was not necessarily walking in the path God had for me. Some of you have probably heard this before, but here goes. 2003 was a year when I learned so much about just how much God really loved me. I'd been fighting something for about a year at that point. Complete exhaustion. It was everything I could do to work an eight-hour shift, drive home, and then have enough strength to get downstairs and in bed to rest. Then one night in May, it all came crashing down on me, or so I thought. You see, I was taken to the ER late with severe pains in my side, 103.5 fever. I was confused. I just did not feel good at all. And you all know me. I had a sister telling me that I needed to go to the hospital that I had some type of infection somewhere. And I looked at her, and I said, nope. (laughs) And in my own stubbornness, because I thought I had everything under control, I was staying home. Until I looked at the foot of my bed, and there stood my 10-year-old daughter at that time, with tears streaming down her face. And she said, Daddy, please go. She said, something's really wrong, and I'm really scared. Men, I can tell you this for a fact. You can think you're the biggest, baddest, toughest guy in the world until you see your daughter crying and afraid. I got up, and I hugged her, and I told her I would go. And we left for the ER. About 1.15 in the morning, after they had run about every test created to man in the hospital that they ran on me, the ER physician walked through the curtain and said, Rick, we need to talk. He said, now remember, I'm just an ER physician and I could be really wrong here. He said, but looking at all the results of your tests, I believe you have some form of leukemia. You want to talk about your heart dropping to your feet? That was my heart at that moment. And then it hit me. And I remember thinking, God, I know why I'm here at this point in my life. And James 5.16 popped right into my head like I was reading it straight from the Bible. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. 
Remember, the CSB says, the prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. You see, I realized at that very moment that I was the train wreck. And God took my 10-year-old daughter and used her to soften my heart so that he could get me where I needed to be at that very moment. And I remember tears just strolling down my face and praying to God to let him know that I understood what was going on. You see, I thought I could do it without him at that point, but I couldn't. And I was the train wreck. And I needed him in my every breath. And folks, I'm here to tell you that in that next week, while I laid in that hospital bed, that's where I learned the importance of prayer. Not one time was I scared. But because I knew that I needed prayer in my life for my own growth and the refreshing of my spirit. And that brings me to this point now. I had people literally all over the world praying for healing for me by my first name. And if you don't think that's humbling, just have someone walk up to you and say, there are people in Spain praying for you. And I continued to pray all day long. I shared the gospel with everyone who dared to walk through that, that uh, hospital door. And I remember looking at my pastor at that time and saying to him this, what is the only way you can look when you're flat on your back? Up. You see, what happened to me in that night in May of 2003 was not that I had leukemia. It was that I was about to learn the importance of prayer. Amen. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. 20 years have gone by now since that day. 20 years of praying from my heart about anything I could. I had someone ask me one time, well, doesn't it make you angry that God allowed that disease to interrupt your life? And my answer was no. And I have actually since thanked God for allowing leukemia to come into my life because I was a train wreck and I needed my father. Amen. I was about to derail folks, but God had different plans for me. Amen. And for me to be able to see that, I needed to see it through his lens, not my own. That's growth. So this morning, I want to share the importance of prayer, both individually as well as corporately. I want you to think with me for a moment about this. Mitch and I pray all the time for this church, for our church family, for our leaders in Valpo, for the leaders around the world and our nation, for the lost, for the sick. That's just the two of us. But what could God do if we as a church all began praying for the same thing together at the same time? Amen. You see, there's power in prayer. So we're going to be kicking off another program here. In mid-November, we'll be starting up a prayer night with a little bit of a twist to it. We understand that everyone cannot make it to the church every night of the week. So this prayer night will be once a week, but we're developing a program through Microsoft Teams where you can just log on from your home on your PC, your tablet, or even your phone. This way, 
we as a community of believers can be praying for the same things week after week. Alistair Begg's book, Pray Big, Learn to Pray Like an Apostle. He says this, the way we use our money and spend our time reveals a great deal about what are our real priorities and what are our real beliefs. And so do our prayers. Whether we pray, for whom we pray, and what we pray. I want you to think of how many times Paul prayed for others. You see, he was always praying for the churches. He never worried about himself, but others. And he encouraged others to pray. And you know what? We, as the body of Christ, need to be praying together as well. Matthew 18, 20 reads this. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And you know what? That includes prayer time. He's with us here. While we worship, in our day-to-day activities, while we pray. So let me ask you this this morning. How is your prayer life today? Is it active? Are you just following something you've done all your life with no meaning? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the communication that you have redeveloped for us through prayer. Lord, I pray that we might take something in this message and let it hit home. And might we become better prayer warriors for you. Let me ask you this real quick this morning. And I start with myself. I could still do better praying than I do. So I'm asking God to help me to be a better prayer warrior. And if you're here this morning and you have that laid on your heart, would you just simply raise your hand so I can pray for all of us together? I see all those hands all over. Let me pray for us, okay? Father, you saw the hands and you know the hearts right here today. Lord, ones who are asking to deepen their prayer life with you, to become more active in their prayer life with you. Father, start with me. Father, make my active prayer life even more active than it was yesterday. Lord, I ask that each and every one of us might develop a prayer life that's effective. Father, have your will in the time to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If y'all will stand, Michael's going to play a song. And the altars are open, and this time is between you and God.
Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes and the born, Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Who oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What a Savior, isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. So if you guys would be seated real quick, Noah's going to come up and give some announcements, and then Becky Ray has something she needs to say too. I brought props. <laughs> so uh, please plan to stay after uh, the service um, at 11 a.m., so now, uh, for our quarterly business meeting. For all of our men, the state's men's conference will be held November 10th and 11th at Highland Lakes Camp. The cost is $65, which will include the events, meals, and lodging. The theme is Forged on the Anvil, so go to valpobaptist.org to register. Save the date of November 26th after the 11 a.m. service for our holiday family feast. More details to come. Remember to set your clocks back one hour this weekend, this next weekend for daylight savings time. Christmas drama team, mark your calendars for practice on Monday, November 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. and Tuesday, November 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Lastly, or no, not lastly, I do have more. Uh, have you signed your kids up for Team Kid yet? They meet on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8 p.m., you can go to valpobaptist.org and click on the event registrations tab to register them. 
Uh, our teens of truth are collecting standard size instant mashed potatoes till next Sunday, November 5th. So it could just be something like this. This is my prop. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Junior church children will be picked up in the teens room downstairs today. So if you are unsure where that is, just come up and ask me or Mitch or, or just somebody uh, where that is located at. And you all are dismissed. But I think... Yeah, Becky raised Yeah, never mind. Becky has some. Thank you, Noah. I like the effects of the... I don't have that. Mm. <laughs> okay. So the month of October, there is a special thing that happens other than us being very, very busy, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. Now, um, we do have some wonderful pastors in our church. I mean, Pastor Gamlin was a pastor here. Um, I still have high regards of him. But we have Pastor Mitch. And, you know, saying thank you or being appreciative of, of him doesn't really, to me, you, there's not enough words. Um, his outreach to people, his love for people, his love for his church family, his love for his family, like he juggles all this. I see it daily. It scares me. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but he does. So he didn't know I was doing this today. Surprise. <laughs> I like doing that for him. Um, so, Pastor Mitch, if you could please, could you say thank you to Pastor, please? I don't know why the office decides to tell me to do this, <clears throat> but, again, we can't thank you enough for everything that you do um, for this church, for your family. I mean, for God, for God first. Like, I've see, like I said, I've seen it firsthand, all the juggling this man does. And for all the people that are behind him, you know, Kelly, I'm pretty sure his daughter, Kelly's family, I know his family is also very supportive of him. So even though it should be all year long, in my personal opinion, to appreciate this man, so, again, thank you for everything. <clears throat> Man, I wish I had a prop. If I had a prop, no, I'd use a big old heart, you know? But, no, for real, um, it's... I don't know what that is. <laughs> a step up here, I'm within reach. But, no, for real, um, <laughs> yeah. I am so grateful um, for so many things. I have a wonderful family. Kelly is the best support partner that a pastor could ever ask for. Hannah is the most precious one-year-old daughter that a pastor could ever ask for. Um, I have a great team that I work with here. So grateful for the team. You know, when you work at a church, you got to see some people every day. And boy, you hope that you love the people you have to see every day. And I am so grateful. I not only love them, but I appreciate the work that they do for the church and for the Lord. And then most of all, I'm appreciative of you guys. You all are just the, from the bottom of my heart, you guys bring me joy. You bring me just the, the utmost happiness in ministry. You know, even being gone in Florida, you know, I think of how good it is to be a part of Alparaiso Baptist Church. And like Rick said, you know, we rush to get back because we don't want to miss what God's doing. And so thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I am so overjoyed to be your pastor. So God bless y'all. Rick tells me to make sure you know, if you didn't already, business meeting after service today. So with that said, are we... Uh,